Good morning, good morning, happy Sunday morning. Good morning, God bless you, God bless you. Thank you for joining with me this morning. Amen, as I'm on my way to the house of the Lord, not the real house of the Lord, because we are the temples of the Holy Spirit, amen. But I'm on my way to church. To, <laughs> to give God glory with his people. Good morning, Trisha. Good morning, Etta. Amen. And listen, <clears throat> I'm thankful for this privilege that I have to come before you and this opportunity to come before you this morning and to give God glory for all that he has done. And just want to share a few things with you. want to wait about 30 seconds, if you don't mind, just for others to come on just about 30 seconds. Um, Keanu Pan, God bless you. Good to see you, my sister. Amen. Um, so just about 30 seconds, I'm going to wait for others to come on because there's something I want to share that I believe is very powerful and, uh, and I believe that it'll be helpful for each of you um, as well as it is helpful for me. Um, and I'm grateful for this privilege. Amen. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Amen. All right. So listen, I just want to talk to you all, right, about freeing yourself. Freeing yourself. You know, we live in a world where there is much regret. regret you know, oftentimes when I see individuals who may have lost loved ones and, and they're now in a funeral. Hey, Pamela, God bless you, my sister. Wendy, God bless you, and Dawn, God bless you as well. Um, you know, and you know, in the midst of a funeral, you know, sometimes there are things that in honesty, you, you know, reflect back on your time with that individual and you wondered if I did enough. You know, you wondered if I said enough. You wondered if that, you know, if you could have done more, you know? And <clears throat> sometimes for some people, that same thought process is filled with guilt. You know, things that you did not say that you should have said, or maybe unforgiveness that you held in your heart, you know? and you know, you held this anger or you had this argument between y'all that just didn't go anywhere. Just no one did anything about it, right? I want to encourage you today, free yourself. The word of God says these, and each of us have challenges that we've gone through. Some of you have gone through divorce. Some of you have gone through separation. Some of you have, uh, have gone through infidelity. Some of you are widows. Um, some of you have experienced all kinds of hurts and disappointments. But the word of God tells us in the book of Hebrews, it says, be careful. It tells us to be careful, lest any root of bitterness be within us. Now, most of us don't want to say that we're bitter. Most of us don't want to say that we're experiencing bitterness because to say that actually feels like, you know what, I'm, um, you know, I'm, I'm losing or I'm weak, right? And so we don't want to say, you know, I'm bitter. We'll say, you know, I'm angry, I'm disappointed, but we don't want to say bitter. But what does it mean to be bitter? What it means to be bitter, it means to not be able to let go of the situation. What do I mean by let go? Not just move past it, but move past it even in your thoughts. When, when certain situations of life that you've gone through, when it kinds of like circulates in your mind and you find that often you're thinking about it, um, often it, it, it makes you sad. Often if you think about it, it makes you mad. Um, then that is a sign that bitterness is in your soul. <clears throat> it's a sign. Good morning, Jarrell. 
it's a sign that bitterness is in your soul. And and for for many of us, no one knows the sorrows of our hearts more than we, right? Because let's be honest, we paint a good picture on the outside. You know, I remember when I went through a separation and eventually divorce, you know, um, that was the point of my conversation. And, and when, when it became a point of my conversation, I noticed that all of this emotion was attached to it, right? Uh, whether it be sadness, whether it be anger, whether it be disappointment, all these things were attached to it. Now, because our minds remember things, we can't really stop remembering, right, what we've gone through. But the question is, is it a testimony or is it a test? Is it, is it something that shows the weaknesses that are within you? the challenges that are within you, you know? And so one of the things I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, you know, I know that you will use this for your glory, but don't allow me to be bitter because of it. Don't allow it to, to attach itself to all this emotion and brokenness and pain and sorrow and, you know, disappointment and anger. Don't let it be attached to that stuff. Let me be able to use what I've gone through as a, a lesson or a sermon or or something to encourage somebody else or to help somebody else or to keep somebody else from making the mistakes that I made, you know, but don't allow it to be attached to that emotion, you know, heal me from that stuff, right? And, and some of you have, may have uh, put the mask on and, and you feel like, you know, I'm a new person and, and you're trying to drown yourself in the sorrow or, or in the newness of other things or busyness or, you know, uh, being proactive or maybe if, you know, you lost a loved one or maybe someone cheated on you. So now you go on all these dates and you, you pick people who um, entertain you and people who, who make you feel like you are the extreme queen, you know, or extreme king, you know, and all these things is to really cover up the pain that you're feeling. Listen, the word of God says, be careful lest any root of bitterness springing up within you and thereby you are defiled. You're defiled. You're defiled. What, what, how am I defiled? Because if I don't release that bitterness, if I don't release the unforgiveness, if I don't release and allow God to heal me from the emotion and the and the stuff that I'm going through and the stuff that I've experienced. If I don't allow God to heal me from that, then that stuff will paint the picture of my future. It'll paint the interactions that I have. It'll help me. It, it'll point me in a certain direction, a pigeonhole me, if you will. It'll pigeonhole me into a direction that, that I'm not really satisfied with because I can't let go, you know? You, and, and that's something that the Bible says, and Christ says these words, with man, things are impossible, but with God, all things are possible. So God is able to do what you, my sister and my brother, can't do. God is able to break the strongholds of what you're going through. Yes, you are human. Yes, you have humanity and attached to that humanity um, are emotions. Yes, we understand that. But those emotions should not imprison you. Do you hear me today? Those emotions should not keep you in bondage and cause you that every time their birthday comes up or every time a, a special day that you formally celebrated come up, now you're depressed. Come on now. That's, that's a trick of the enemy. And honestly, it does that person no honor for you holding on to that, whether it be your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your grandmother, husband, wife, child, whatever it is, it, it does not give them honor because look at what God says. Here's the truth of God. The word of God says that while a woman or a man is married to someone else, 
while the woman or man is married to someone else and and you know uh that if that woman or man goes and has a relationship with someone else the word of god says um uh, she shall be called or he shall be called an adulterer right because you're cheating on your spouse but once that spouse dies or once that situation is over right then you're no longer called an adulterer in other words there's a separation death separates us you know um, if a person has chosen to walk out, then don't you walk out on you. My God, help us, Holy Spirit. I feel a, a sermon right there. Don't you walk out on you. If someone hasn't forgiven you, the question is, have you forgiven you? Because you can't expect for someone to forgive you if you, my friends, can't forgive you. And so it becomes a situation that we have got to come to the place of, of complete and utter surrender to allow God to clean out, to dredge out the depths of our hearts. And God, heal me. Don't let me plaster stuff on top of each other. It's like, you know, when I was uh, doing uh, construction and, uh, you know, Oftentimes, you know, a homeowner would come to me and say, you know, I have a leak on my roof or I have a leak, you know, on the wall or something like that. And then when I go to, to inspect the house or when I go to look at the house, come to find out that the former owner had a leak too. But the way they, they dealt with it is by hiring somebody to put a layer on top of it to put a layer on top of it because it's cheaper. It's cheaper to patch things. It's quicker to patch things. My God, help us Holy Spirit. It, it is quicker to, to patch things. The harder thing is to pull everything up and find out where's the problem. The harder thing is to go into that dark closet and allow God free reign to go in there and to purge out and to dredge out all of the stuff that we're feeling and all of the emotion and to give us that supernatural healing that God can give. That's the harder part because then we have to face. We have to face it. We have to face it. And I'm so grateful. I'm so eternally grateful. My God, God bless you, my sister. I'm so eternally grateful for how the Lord brought me and allowed me to come to a low place my god he allowed me to come to a low place where it, it broke my will and once it broke my will and i was empty guess what now because i was at my lowest point now i could truly look up and receive from him the healing that i need now it doesn't mean that i don't care it doesn't mean that it hadn't affect me God is not telling me to act like a robot and act like nothing has gone on and no, this has not hurt me and no, what you've done has not affected me. You know, no, that's not what God wants. God wants you to have the knowledge and the experience of everything that you've gone through. But at the same time, he doesn't want that stuff to, to, to keep you in bondage. And, and too many of us, what we're doing is putting patches on top of and and what happened in construction is after a while if you keep putting patches keep putting patches then the part that was weak in the first place the, you know the wood that was damaged in the first place the the, the 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 foundation of the roof that was damaged in the first place after a while it gets a bow and that's where water collects in other words after a while, if you keep patching, if you keep patching over and looking for stuff, you know, I've been hurt with this one, so I'm going to find somebody else that really, you know, keeps my attention and really keeps me excited. And then because I'm really hurt inside, because I'm really hurt inside, then guess what? What happens is that every little thing they do now pisses me off and now I'm looking for a new person. I'm looking for somebody else to, 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 to uh, heal me. I'm looking for somebody else to cause me to overlook and to look past that pain and that sorrow. And so guess what? I never fully, never fully live. 
never fully come to life. But but I'm constantly patching, and so what happens is that that roof concaves in that weakened area, and now every time it rains, rain collects in that spot. Every time the leaves get on the roof, the leaves collect in that spot. And then eventually, even what you patched on top, even what you patched on top, though it's new, now it leaks still. And after a while, it doesn't matter what you do, every time it rains, water comes in. And so we have to allow God, that's what Isaiah chapter one says. He says the whole head is sick and there is no soundness in it. There's no, there's no soundness inside. And that's one of the things I really ask the Lord, Lord, give me soundness. Y'all forgive me. I'm, I'm looking at this building that people are constructing and they have this funny little tree propped it on top of the building, even though the building is not even finished. Um, and, you know, as a side note, y'all know that in construction, oftentimes companies, they do like, um, they call for these different um, priests and stuff to come and to sanctify the place, different religions to come so that they could tell potential clients, this place has been blessed by this, this order of stuff because a lot of people won't take the business. It, that's a si separate conversation. But today I wanted to just talk to you about, you know, releasing yourself, releasing yourself, letting God come into that dark place, letting God come into that place where you don't have the answers, that, that place where you're not in control. You know, I know, yeah, I know we want to publicly, we want to keep it together. I understand that. You know, because even in my own life, there are times that I'm a pastor and there are times that I go through stresses and I go through duresses and what do I have to do? You know, I have to kind of get it together so I can serve, right? And But what I am talking is not patching. Don't patch. Don't patch. Don't look for stuff to preoccupy your mind and your time so that now you can feel better. Don't allow for stuff to just, you want to feel better. No, no, no. You don't want to feel better. You want to be better. You don't want to, you know, have these patches over your life to, to say, you know what, um, this is who I am. And, and, and deep down inside, you know, that's not who you are. Deep down inside, there are wounds, there are bruises, there are sores, there are, areas of your life that you don't want nobody touching, right? I'm asking you today, today, ask the Lord verbally, ask the Lord to come into that place. Come into that place. David said, search me, O God, and try me and see if there be any wicked way within me. See if there be anything that would hinder me from seeing you, God. Isaiah said these words in Isaiah chapter 6. He says, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. So in other words, Uzziah represented something that blocked him from seeing God. And I'm telling you, a lot of these pains and a lot of things that we go through has the potential to block us from really seeing God and what he would have for our lives because we're spending our time trying to preoccupy ourselves. We're trying to preoccupy ourselves and keep ourselves busy enough so that we don't have time to think. We don't have time to feel. We don't have time to really come to the place of honesty. I need to pull over for a second. We don't have the time to come to the place of honesty to say, here I am, God, with all my broken pieces, with all my sorrows. So 
Number one, verbally, this is important. Verbally, that means speaking out. Ask God, Lord, come into my heart and remove anything that hinders me from seeing and hearing you. Anything in my heart that I have not let go. Any unforgiveness that I haven't given. Or that unforgiveness or unforgiveness that I have in my heart. Anything that I'm holding against someone. I remember hearing someone recently tell uh, someone that they, they cared about that I'm upset that you didn't wait for me. What? It's time to release that stuff. The word of God says it is appointed unto every man to die. And after this, the judgment. So every one of us will pass the way of those we've lost. Then also, even the world says into each life, some rain must fall. So today may be sunny for some. Tomorrow, it may be a storm ahead. But it's time for us to, to Lord, Lord, take that stuff out of me. So that I'm not running like in the underground where I'm going from here to there, trying to keep my mind off of what I really know to be true. Trying to stay busy enough. So I don't have chance to face what I'm frustrated about. Lord, take that out of me. Lord, if I'm holding anything against anyone, take it out of me. Lord, if, if I'm angry because of the circumstances of life and, and how they left me with the bag, Lord, take it out of me. If I'm angry at someone because they cheated on me, God, take it out of me. I'm, I'm saying you got to say this verbally. You got to come out of your mouth and you got to say it, God, because you know the condition of your heart more than anyone else. You know the condition of your soul. You know what stays on your mind. So Lord, take it out of me. Right? That's number one. Number two, you got to say, if you're holding any anger towards anyone, whether they have passed or whether they're still living, you must verbally, verbally start off with this. Say their name and say, I choose to forgive you. I choose to forgive you because if you don't forgive, you cannot live. If you don't forgive, you cannot experience the things that God has for you. If you don't forgive, right? Hey, y'all, you know, this cop just passed me and he's slowing down real slow. I hope he comes back because I would love to preach to him. Um, you can't forgive and you can't live. If you can't forgive, you can't live. If you can't release someone, you can't live. If you can't let go, you can't live. If you can't get by, you can't live. And yes, there are some things that, yeah, for me and you, these things are difficult to let go because of, of how it really affected us and how it really hurt. But that's when we say, God, give me the power to let go. Right? If the person is alive, and if you can reach out to them, tell them, forgive me. <laughs> Not, not, I forgive you. No. Tell them, forgive me. Because your unforgiveness held you in bondage. It doesn't matter what they did. Your unforgiveness. 
Because what they did, they will be judged by. What you do, you will be judged by. So their madness or the stuff they did, that's not what damages you. What damages you is how you respond to what they do and whether or not you hold bitterness or unforgiveness in your heart. So I want to encourage you. Free yourself. Free yourself. I want to encourage you. Free yourself today. Not tomorrow. Not next week. Not next month. Free yourself today. And so I love you all. Let me head on to church because we begin at 8 o'clock and I'm supposed to meet with the ministers and the leaders for prayer at 8.45 and it's 7.33. So I love you all with the love of Christ. If you're nearby, stop on by our church, right? We start at 8 o'clock. Don't worry about how you dress. You could come casual if you like. You come with some jeans on. You come with a t-shirt on, whatever. Come and let's worship the Lord together. And there's a word in the house to instruct your life. There's a word in the house to strengthen you, to encourage you in your faith. And so don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. All of us have fallen short. All of us have sinned. And, and we're not here to judge you. We are here to help you. And so I love you all. Have a blessed and marvelous day. Until the next video, <laughs> have a blessed morning. And uh, I pray that you are in the house of God today. Have a blessed day, okay? God bless you guys.